Hi, I'm Rob Johnstone from Woodworkers Journal, and today I'm going to teach you how to make this indoor bag toss game. Let's get started. <laughs> director Jeff Jacobson came up with this version of the common bag toss game. It, as you can see it has three holes. This one is worth negative one, this one is worth one point, and this one is worth two points. He was thinking of the arcade game skee ball when he was coming up with this idea. I'm going to get started by cutting some 3 8 inch MDF from which I will make a template. This template will control making all the holes, bag holes, handles, and even the outside shape of the board. I'm using my track saw to break down the large sheet. So easy. Now I'm going to lay out all the shapes and details that will make up the template. I'll cut those shapes out later. You can find this in the downloadable drawings in the information below. Start by forming a center line on the MDF blank. Then locate the centers of the circles. I'm using a rub collar to guide the cuts with the template. There's a 1 16th offset from the collar to the bit. So I make the circles 1 8 inch larger than the final diameter I'm looking for. Laying out the long curve works best with a helper. Now it's time to cut away the waste on the template. I'll use this battery powered jigsaw from DeWalt and a fine cutting blade. I want to be right on the lines as these edges will guide the router as it cuts. I'll use the track saw to cut the rhombus shape. The body of the game is made from half inch birch plywood. Now I'm going to use this track saw to cut three 14 inch blanks. And then I'll rip several strips of one and a quarter inch wide plywood stock. Rockler sells 24 by 48 inch sheets of American birch plywood that are of great quality. Now at last, it's time to do some routing. As I inferred earlier, the router is outfitted with a 3 8 of an inch OD rub collar and a quarter inch up spiral bit. I've got the plunge router set to cut a quarter inch deep pass on all the shapes. Then I turn the depth stop to cut a bit more than a half inch deep and route the openings completely. Now I can almost hear you say, Rob, you're not done routing. And I'm so glad you pointed that out because you are absolutely correct. In order to get the same exact shapes, I'm going to now flip over my uh, piece of wood and now put the template on and relocate it and route out the last couple of things. Of course, you just go through that process one more time to cut the second game board, then go grab the third blank and your template, set it on top. Now I'm routing the stock that will form the two backer boards that get mounted under the rhombus shape opening. I'll cut one side and then the other. Then I grab the track saw and cross cut the two pieces nine inches long. Now we're really making some progress. Remember those skinny pieces of wood I cut earlier? Well now we're going to glue them together to form a block that's an inch and a quarter wide by an inch and a half tall. Later, we'll use these blocks to attach the legs to the game board. We used a one and a quarter inch diameter maple dowel to make the leg. I put hanger bolts into one end, which later fit into T-nuts. The T-nuts will go into the narrow blank we made earlier. I cut those strips that we just glued up down to 12 inches long. And then I drilled holes for the T-nuts, which will hold the legs. And I just pound the T-nuts in. 
Eventually, these will hold the legs in a standing position, and these will hold it in the storage position. So all of the pieces are ready for assembly now, but you've come to a point where you have to make a decision. How are you going to finish them? As you saw, we thought painting them and adding a lot of color was pretty cool, but this birch plywood is so good to look at, a clear finish would be good too. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and maybe you even learned something. I'm Rob Johnstone from Woodworkers Journal. Keep on making sawdust.